All right, guys. It's KK4PYN here. And it's Monday. Uh, time for Monday Module Madness. Today's going to be a little bit different. I missed last Monday because I was out driving around uh, picking up some new gear. I uh, got a couple fun things, uh, which I'll show you here. Right now we're listening to the Florida guys here on 7.230. Yeah, when they're talking, we're listening to them. There we go. Anyway, well, they're coming in nice and strong. But um, I picked up, I traded out anyway. Uh, this IntelliTuner from MSJ. It's a model 993B. And uh, sorry for the shaky video here. I'm working on a cell phone. At any rate, I picked that up. I traded for it. And I also picked up this cool HT, which is a Radio Shack HTX 420 dual band. Works fantastic. It uh, had a problem with the display when I got it. One of the this fourth digit wasn't showing up here, but I disassembled it and cleaned it contact bar up on the LCD here and that works fine. I just need to find a, a shaft here. At any rate, put that aside. This uh, MFJ IntelliTuner is pretty pretty cool. I've, I had a 949 Charlie before it that I actually traded for it. It's a manual antenna tuner and it worked fine. But I said, you know, let's try something different. So we'll turn this on here. And you can't really see the meter because the backlight is so strong, but it pops up and does its thing. But anyway, we'll tune off frequency here. Yeah, we'll go right there. Uh, let's go a little bit higher away from those guys. And again, I'm sorry for the shaky video. So, what we're going to do here is turn our RF gain down. Switch over to CW. And I'm going to hold this button down for a couple seconds, which is going to stick it into Sticky Tune. There we go, it's in Sticky Tune. Oh. Yeah, it wants something different. Anyway, okay. So it powers up in Sticky Tune. Sorry about that. You can see that the line is over that. We're on Antenna 1. And we're going to flip this radio into Transmit. And when I hit the key here, this thing is going to make a huge racket. And it's going to tune up. How well you'll be able to see the meters there, but uh, all right, let's give this a shot. You'll see the transmit light, or uh, well, you'll see the the meter on the 745 come up. But I'm just going to broadcast a carrier, and when it detects that, it's going to tune. All right, we got us down to 1.4. I'm on low power, so we're putting out 12, vo 12 watts there. The reflected power is 0.4 watts. 1.4 to 1. So we'll look at the meter here. Get it to focus. Probably not going to happen. As you can see, it's, it's not that bad. All right, so anyway, it's tuned up. Take it off transmit here. Come back over to lower sideband. There we go. So we'll come back up to where we were there. Now, I'm on low power. And uh, we're going to transmit here. Let me turn this off. 
just so you can see the oh, the meter is working and uh, everything going on KK4 PYN testing now sideband obviously is not a continuous tone so you see you're putting out two watts there but the reflected zero so the SWR is good we'll turn the power on this up KK4 PYN testing alright now you saw that that really came up this is not going to show your actual forward power at rest because uh, on sideband it, it when it when you unkey you're at a low vol you're at a low power level so we'll switch this back over to CW Looking in transmit. There you go. 117 watts. Showing yesterday ours 1.6. So this thing's pretty cool. And uh, you know, I went through it and did a couple things. Um, but the one thing that doesn't work is it's supposed to show the frequency you're transmitting on there. Um, let's see actually if we change the mode on this alright so this is a different type of power meter that shows graphically so you can see that so putting out 117 watts yeah, we can change this mode Again, 110 mode here. This shows what inductors and capacitance that it's selected and your power. So there you go. Uh, I mean, it works, except it's not showing me frequency. Also, this is supposed to, it has 20,000 memories. It's supposed to uh, store the tune on every frequency that you tune. And when you transmit on that frequency again, it automatically drops in the right values. Well, it's not doing that. And since that frequency counter is not working, I decided to go through and do a test. Um, there's uh, some self-testing that you can do with the microprocessor in it. And everything came out fine except for the microprocessor wake up circuit had a fault called MFJ talked to them a little bit they're real helpful by the way and he says yeah one of the microprocessors probably has an issue but everything else is working fine I didn't pay much money for it I just don't have this frequency counter and that's really in there for you know when you're using a rig an older rig that doesn't have one it'll show you what frequency you're on well, it also helps to store that same circuit, the frequency counter circuit helps to store your memories. Well, I don't have that, which means every time I use it, I got to tune it. That's kind of annoying, so I decided to figure out what's going on. Let me show you what I found. I took all the screws out beforehand for easier access. Something going on under the hood, right? <sighs> well, here you can see uh, all the relays and all the inductors and capacitors, uh, the built in 4 to 1 ballon. And then over here is your circuitry for everything else. So we can get some light on the situation, and probably too much. Anyway. This is a, a PIC microcontroller that's socketed, which is really nice. <laughs> like, that makes it so much easier. You know, if I wanted to take that out and drop in a custom program one, or if they do a firmware revision, you know, call MFJ, they'd probably send me another one. I'm sure if I paid for it. But anyway, I wanted to find out what was going on with this thing. So unplug the power here. Well, 
The issue became apparent pretty quickly. Let me see if it'll focus. Uh, behind the MCU was this other little component, U4. U4 looks like it has a bit of an issue. And I wish this thing would focus. Anyway, it's burned up real bad. Some of the surface mount resistors around it are shot as well. And uh, I already looked at it close under a microscope. It's it can crazy shot. But if you look, this trace right here, you follow that all the way back, here's the input from the transmitter. So it's picking up its frequency off of there. Also back here in the corner, I don't know how well you can actually see that. And again, I apologize, this video is horrible. But there's a resistor right there that's burned to heck too. So I don't know, maybe this thing got hit by lightning. I mean, I imagine it's pretty hard to put too much voltage into it. You know, it's got a barrel connector um, for 12 volt DC that powers everything. And as you can see, the rest works. Um, there's some pretty beefy size diodes and stuff there. This is the... Uh, input jack there for the power but man it's just it's tore up <laughs> see if I can get a better angle on that yeah and hopefully the YouTube editor will take all this shaking this out there we go there's a nice look at it U4 it's uh, taps for that guy not working but how is it that this thing got burned up so bad? I mean, that took a lot of voltage to burn that up. I've seen stuff burn up like that before. The pick's fine. This other processor over here is fine. All the circuitry still works. You saw the display working. You know, that, that that's pretty amazing. So, I'm going to uh, call MFJ again and let him know what I found. That board is pretty tore up, and uh, most of the pads on that processor come from a via on the other side of the board. I haven't even bothered taking this board out to look at what's on the other side of it. I'm sure it uh, may not be double-sided. It may be, but uh, for sure the most of the most of the leads on that uh, SOT package go to a, a via. And go somewhere else so it may require some uh, very very constructive soldering i got to find out what what chip that is get a schematic for it and uh and replace this resistor up here which shouldn't be that much of a problem the problem taking this board out is all this stuff soldered to it so i may ask mfj if they'll take it back <laughs> and fix it um, but who knows? So anyway, that's, uh, that's today's video. Got some other stuff going on. I got, uh, some parts ordered for some other projects. We'll see what happens. But I, I, you know, MFJ is one of those brands that you either love it or you hate it. I've got um, quite a bit of MFJ gear and never seemed to really have any problem with it. Um, the 949 tuner that I had worked fantastic. And, uh, I mean, you can see it's all pretty easy to work on. I mean, if this chip was just bad and not exploded, it'd just be a simple, you know, just heating it up, taking it off, and replacing it, which I'm pretty good with surface mount, so it wouldn't be that big a deal. But anyway, um, I think it's pretty amazing that this thing will still work with its basic functionality after that type of damage that to me uh says that these guys have done their circuit board isolation and circuit isolation properly and um you know that damage didn't cascade into other parts because i mean look it's right there this you know unless i'm i haven't looked at the schematic for this unless none of this is working because of this um 
you know, I think this is the main processor for this board. Like I said, I haven't looked at the back. There's another processor right here, which I haven't looked up. It's, uh, I can't see it. Eyes are not as good as they used to be. Anyway, so there you go. I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated on the progress of this one, but I think it's just amazing that with that type of damage, I can still plug this thing in and it works most of the way. <laughs> so, all right, guys, until uh, next time, we'll hope to hear you on the air and, uh, please like and subscribe. Even though I'm a horrible camera guy, uh, you might find this useful. Who knows? If you have one of these and it's not working, that might be the issue. So, If you do have that issue with one of these, leave it in the comments. And um, if I find something out from MFJ when I talk to them today, then I'll, I'll try and pass that information on. 73, guys. Have a good day.